Hi, welcome to Modeling and Simulation of Dynamical Systems at Czech Technical University in Prague. In this video I would like to continue with the introduction or recapitulation for some of uh, basic formats of mathematical models of dynamical systems. In particular I would like to talk about something called, called differential algebraic systems. also called in a pretty much shorter way DAE. Now differential algebraic system as the name suggests consists of uh, differential and algebraic equations. In general this could look like this x dot is equal to some generally nonlinear function of x u possibly also explicitly t and the other equation the algebraic one can look like this 0 is equal to generally nonlinear function g of x u and t again now note that unlike unlike in the state space case where the addition of the output equation, the algebraic one, does not change the solution of the state equation. Here there is a coupling between these two guys. If you cannot see it immediately, I mean the contrast with the state space model, so let's put it here just as a reminder. So x dot is equal to f of x u t and y is a function of g of x u and t. You see the addition of, of the second equation of the output equation does not interfere or doesn't restrict the solution of the of the state equation whereas here uh, it does. In fact what I have uh, introduced here is called an explicit explicit uh, DAE model but we can also have explicit because the derivative is explicitly expressed uh, on the left hand side whereas we can also have an implicit DAE model which looks like which looks like this 0 is equal to function of the derivative of x, x itself, u and t. And on top of that we can add the algebraic uh, equation as before. Now in the linear case this implicit uh, DAE model can look like this. We can have just a single, we can combine these two equations into just a single one which may look like this. Matrix E times X dot plus uh, matrix A times X plus matrix B times U. Now for aesthetics uh, reasons I will put somewhat arbitrarily a minus sign here I can do it this was complete uh, completely arbitrary I mean the definition of e is uh, can include the minus sign right why not so let's now rewrite it and what I get is e times uh, x dot is equal a times x plus b times u And now this special format deserves a special name and it's called very often descriptor descriptor system. Now it can certainly it, or it must certainly come into your mind that in the situation where A is invertible we could perhaps now 
multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse of e. Let's now let's first get some space here. So if I now multiply both sides by the inverse of e, what I get is this. inverse times b u t. Now this will be an identity matrix, this will be our new A matrix and this will be our new B matrix. So we are back at the state space state space of model. However, the thing is that the inverse of E need not exist. And even if it uh, does exist, it uh, may be numerically unreliable to try to compute it because it will be ill-conditioned. It can be ill-conditioned. In that case, in that case, we cannot really regard x, uh, x as a state variable. And remember uh, or recall what uh, what does it mean that a certain variable is a state variable, right? Uh, from the previous lecture, it simply means that then really knowing just this variable is perfectly sufficient to determine what will happen next. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that in MATLAB the implementation of a constructor for the descriptor model, which is called uh, which is called DSS you use it like this so uh, E A B C D or maybe the order is reversed please uh, check uh, by yourself so it's quite what, what's quite unfortunate is is that they actually uh, call it descriptor state space and now in the rest of this video I would like to argue that indeed X is not really a state variable the way I will I will lead this argument is that I will actually start with the state space model I already have one somewhere yeah that's the nonlinear one up there so I will instead start with the standard linear one so x dot is equal a times x plus b times u and y is equal uh, to c times x plus d times u now let's rewrite this into a descriptive framework uh, and we will do it by introducing a new variable a stacked vector comprised of uh, x and y. So now with this new definition let's rewrite uh, the state model into the descriptor framework. So I will have 1 0 0 0 times x uh, dot and y y dot is equal to a 0 c minus 1 please double check if I'm not making mistake or typo x y and then plus b d and u over here. So now recall that this is our x bar vector. Now uh, because we know where we started, right? We started with a state space uh, model so it's only this guy that is really a state. Whereas this guy is not a state. Apparently 
it's uh, it's a larger vector it contains some components that are in some sense redundant or there is simply some uh, coupling between the components of the vector x bar so once again provided the e matrix in the descriptive model is not invertible that means it's singular the x vector is not really a state and now let me conclude uh, this video by showing an example of, uh, of a descriptor model uh, because maybe so far uh, you had an impression that it's some something special something advanced uh, quite the opposite is actually uh, true uh, the scripter models turn out to be perhaps the most uh, natural format of a model so let's uh, let's get started We will consider a circuit, a simple uh, linear circuit consisting of a bunch of resistors, an inductor and a capacitor and a source of voltage. So give me a few seconds to draw it. Uh, so first resistor, second resistor, here I will have an inductor and a capacitor over here now the labels are mu0 r1 c r2 and l all right so um, now i have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five components. Each component is characterized by a pair of variables, voltage and current. So that means in total I have uh, 10 variables that fully characterize the circuit. In order to solve for these 10 variables uniquely, I need to have uh, 10 equations. Where do I get uh, these equations from? Well, now let's forget uh, for the moment about the uh, existence of some specialized techniques. What I will pursue right now is the most straightforward, not necessarily the... the uh, most efficient but certainly the most uh, versatile approach of combining uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's uh, current law and the constitutive equations for the individual elements. So let's start with these equations for uh, for the elements. Uh, for the uh, voltage source let's say this is actually I uh, source of a constant voltage so u0 is equal to say 10 or could be could be harmonic uh, signal or uh, whatever you like then uh, how about the uh, resistor r1 obviously the voltage drop on the resistor r1 is related to the current that goes through it and it's the value of the resistance well, before I proceed, let me perhaps uh, do what I should have done before, and that is I will first label uh, all the voltages and currents in the circuit, and uh, also add the polarities of the voltages and direction for the currents. So the polarities will be just completely arbitrary, so I will decide to, to regard the voltages positive in this sense. Now this will be called U1, obviously, this will be UL, this will be U2, uh, and this will be UC, and finally the currents, so I will regard this as uh, current e, uh, I0, this will be I1, this will be IL, what's uh, next? Uh, I C and this will be I 
two. The directions of the currents are in uh, agreement with the polarities of the voltages. So we we keep we follow the uh, the notation usually ad adopted in uh, in the circuits community. All right. So let, let's now uh, continue with uh, the enumeration of the equations for the elements. The other the other uh, the resistor it's pretty much the the same model as before then how about the inductor ul is equal to l times derivative of the current with respect to time and finally the current through or into the induct into the capacitor is c times derivative with respect to time derivative of uh, the voltage so we have now one two three four five equations we still need five so three more can be provided by the Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law let's now identify three loops here let's say the first one will be this the second one will be this and the third one will be this so let's now write them down uh, the sum of voltages should be zero so from the first loop we get uh, this from the second loop and from the third loop we have that u uh, c is actually equal to u2 and finally uh, the Kirchhoff's current law we have actually three nodes here one two and three however uh, we can uh, discard this third node as the redundant one so we only need actually two more equations so we will uh, write down the equations corresponding to the node number one and two and these two equations are i0 is equal to i1 plus il and finally i1 is equal to ic plus i2 and that's it now these uh, ten equations immediately constitute a uh, descriptor model for our circuit so you can see that it's it was really pretty natural to arrive at this model now if you are interested you can now launch your MATLAB and define your system using the SS command and simulate its uh, response to initial conditions, uh, step response, or whatsoever. Now, the final uh, issue that I would like to discuss in this video is actually how to convert the descriptor model into the more familiar, perhaps even more popular state state space model. In other words. Uh, so first let me write this down so now this will be descriptor to state space so what we are after is to write down a state space model with how many uh, state variables I only have two accumulators of energy, two derivatives in, in all these uh, equations, so just two differential equations, so the order of the system will be just two, and the state the state vector will be uh, uc and il, voltage on the capacitor and the current through the inductor right so this will be our state vector and therefore what we need to determine is the a matrix and the b matrix or actually just a column vector because we only consider a single input the u0 and this should give us 
the derivatives of the state vector which is u c dot and i l uh, dot optionally if you if you like if you want to ident identify one of the variables in our circuit as the output one you could also form the output variable say if uh, i2 is our variable of interest you need to determine this row vector this our c matrix essentially and just a scalar which uh, is associated with the input u0. Now, uh, I will not explain in this particular video how to do this conversion. I will only tease you a little bit by showing you actually the, the result. You may, you may try to, th to figure it out by yourself. So it will be minus R1 plus R2 over R1 R2 C 0 0 0 and I will have 1 over R1 C and 1 over L and for the output equation I will have 1 over R 2 and 0 and 0. Now I'll only show this result for you to, to be able to compare the results of simulation for the state space model and the descriptor model, but uh, I would like to emphasize here that actually this conversion from the descriptor model to state space model is or can be far from trivial because what can happen is that such conversion is simply not possible in that case we call we, we talk about uh, singularities in the descriptor model however let's postpone discussion if of this uh, uh, fine topic to some uh, future lecture. What remains to be done in this, uh, in our quest to uh, recapitulate uh, various popular formats of mathematical models is to discuss second order models and possibly some higher order models. And for that, I will direct you to some other videos that, that come.